Hello, uh, this is Neil Caden and uh, with the Perio, the Perio Foundation and one of the facilitators for Perio Teaching and Learning meetings along with Matthew Burgess and Trisha Gordon. And today is um, Wednesday, February 17th and uh, we are having the, the Perio Teaching and Learning meeting. And uh, today's focus is on Sakai QA, um, but we'll go through the regular agenda items as always. and um, and Matt's going to assist me by showing uh, certain screens. So Matt, you might want to try. Uh, maybe you could start trying to share your screen while we start, and, and you know, just share the agenda, the agenda for now. That way, we're all set up when we start sharing links here. You don't mind? Sure, I'll get on it right now. Okay, right, cool. Um, <clears throat> so let's start with uh, with uh, announcements. Um, so good news is their Sakai 11 branch was made this morning. It's pretty exciting. Um, so what that means is that we're, that shows a higher level of commitment and e uh, easier way to manage um, what goes into Sakai 11. So uh, that's that's a good thing. So that's a really important milestone in our path towards releasing Sakai 11, which we are targeting uh, for May before the Open Aperio conference, and we have significant community support. It's a tight timeline, and that makes it a challenge, but on the other hand, and, you know, we have significant institutional and community support, so I'm really hoping that that will all pan out the way we are expecting it will, and it's pretty exciting. Um, and we could talk a little bit about more of that, uh, what's going to, you know, what that's going to look like at a later meeting. Um, I wanted to mention that rubrics is being added to Lessons for Sakai 11. I don't know exactly what that looks like. It will probably be out in a, in a few weeks uh, in our master version of Sakai, or nightly version of Sakai, so that's kind of exciting. Um, Neil? Hi. Yeah. This is Luisa. Can I speak a few words about the rubrics? Yes, please. Um, I just remind people what the rubrics is. It is not the iRubrics tool. It's it's not. It's a, already in the lessons, but uh, it doesn't work well. If you create the student pages, uh, you can create some kind of uh, rubrics inside the lessons, so that student can critique each other using that rubrics. It's that one. So um, um, Charles Hedrick is set up to improve that functionality. So I'm very excited to know that. Yeah, there's a few words about the uh, rubrics in lessons. That's very helpful. Thank you, Louisa. You had to clarify what exactly that is or isn't. Thank you. No problem. Um, Let's see, other, a few other things going on, and then other people can jump in. Uh, uh, we need help updating. Laura Geckler spearheading uh, an effort to update our list of active Sakai schools, which could help us on a number of fronts. Um, one, of the, one of the areas we want to do, we're trying to do a better job promoting Sakai. We have a, a little marketing group trying to figure out how we can update our website and get the word out a little better. Um, I expect that will be an incremental kind of thing we work on, um, but uh, one of the things we'll be calling for help in the near future is asking for people to, you know, I think we're doing a pretty good job identifying schools, but we want to get as many as possible. If there's institutions or schools out there that aren't on the list, um, you know, we would appreciate if people could, you could uh, let us know. And the list will come. We're going to try and make it something simple, like, because otherwise you have to either go onto a very complex spreadsheet we've been using to manage this process or, um, you know, or going to JIRA and figure that out. So we're going to try and make it a bit easier for, and so that's a thing coming. Uh, and be on the lookout for that. Uh, probably a lot of people on this call, I'm guessing your institutions are already updated and on the list and up to date. But um, so kind of preaching the choir here, but just FYI. Uh, Atlas, do you want to say a few words about Atlas? Uh, um, yes, yeah, so this is Luisa again. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the Atlas committee. Uh, which is the Apparel Teaching and the Learning Awards. Uh, we're running a social media campaign today. Uh, well, afterthought is that we maybe should have contacted the marketing group. Uh, sorry. <laughs> we just uh, uh, suddenly decided to do this and did it quickly. Uh, 
uh, we did have a plan, and we tried to um, promote Atlas 2016 application uh, around the globe. Uh, Apparel.org um, on Twitter uh, very graciously agreed to post the first message this morning. Actually, it's already up. And then everybody else will uh, start tweeting and retweeting through the day. Um, I think we will focus on Twitter and also uh, sometimes we'll be on um, the, um, um, the, 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 the LinkedIn, sorry, I suddenly forgot the word. Um, so um, if you go to Twitter and search for the apparel tweet and possibly if you could retweet and through the day, we really appreciate that. Uh, if you want to ask me some details, I would uh, would be delighted to provide maybe um, the marketing group. We can have a talk uh, afterwards, maybe next week. Yeah, a few um, words. Go ahead and um, post the link to the tweet so it make it easier for folks to retweet. Let me go ahead and do that. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, just as an FYI, we have a. Um, if you want to receive either a Perio tweets um, automatically in your email to know with a link like this so you can easily retweet or Sakai, I, we have two different lists and they automatically send um, any time a Perio or, you know, any time a Perio or Sakai tweets, then you get an email and it has the, what the, the content of the tweet and the link to the tweet in case you want to retweet. So if you want to be a part of either of those lists, let me know and I'll add you to those um, Google groups. Uh, next thing on there is uh, Sakai VC funds, and I see Wilma is on. She's the chair of that group, so I'm sorry. I'm curious, Wilma, if you'd like to, uh, you know, mention, say a few words. Sure. Um, you may have seen the proposal that was posted to the list uh, yesterday, but um, after some discussion about what would be the best use of uh, the virtual conference money that we raised um, last year, um, there was a lot of um, enthusiasm for making sure that the Sakai 11 release um, is, you know, on time and and a really solid release. So um, we decided to use the money to supplement some of the development efforts uh, for Morpheus to make sure that um, the responsive design is as solid as we can make it. Um, there's still quite a few tools that are being um, QA tested right now. And so we're still sort of defining the scope of what exactly is going to need to be done. But we know that there's a lot of work yet to do there. So additional development efforts um, will definitely um, speed up that process and make it a lot easier for those who are interested in early adoption of Sakai 11. Uh, there won't be as many kinks to work out. So that's the plan right now. Um, we did post that message. And and so if anybody has any comments or feedback, we welcome the feedback. Um, you know, please, you know, reply to the, the message on the list. Um, as soon as the, some of the QA test fests have uncovered, and we'll talk, be talking about that more today because today's our QA um, focus, I guess. So um, once, uh, once we uncover a lot of the stuff that still needs tweaking for Morpheus, then we'll have a better idea of, of how we're going to allocate the, the money and, and who's going to do the development. So there will be more information um, coming. Thanks. Thanks, Wilma. I'm curious if you want to uh, mention anything about the Sakai Docs uh, group work starting up. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I didn't see it on the agenda, so thank you for reminding me. Um, we are gearing up to update all the documentation for Sakai 11. Um, so if anybody is interested in helping with that effort, um, it's really a process of going through all of the existing documentation, which was recently updated. Um, and you know, updating screenshots. Um, there are a few tools like Gradebook and Lessons that have undergone some pretty dramatic changes. So those will need to be kind of rewritten from the ground up. So if anybody is interested in getting involved with the documentation effort, um, you know, please let me know. Uh, we have monthly meetings as well, so I can I can post the link to the Confluence page for the Docs group here, 
in case anybody's interested, but we definitely need um, more, more helpers, <laughs> more volunteers. So if you're interested, please let me know. Thanks, Wilma. Um, anyone else on any other efforts in Sakai, um, either chairs or members of committees like to uh, chime in? Have any uh, updates? Okay, well, we will move on then. Um, I believe Didi uh, from Marist is going to be joining us in a second, which is great because we have several members of the QA uh, group here on the call. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, if, you, if you think of an, by the way, if you think of um, uh, an issue that you want to make sure the group knows about, you can interrupt and we can always add it in later. Um, but uh, I'll just kind of focus on Sakai QA and tell you kind of what's going on there. and um, we'll show you some of the forms we're using and give it, we're not going to, it's not, there's not enough time to do a full training, I don't think here, but we might be able to answer enough questions that people can get a head start on, um, on doing Sakai Q QA testing or starting to participate in it. Um, so let me go ahead and start off here by saying the first thing is that, uh, we are, going to have a weekly time allocated for Sakai QA where we expect a number of members of the community to be on at the same time and that way we can provide you know support and answer questions more seamlessly. You can always ask questions um, to Sakai QA team. You can always ask questions on the list to Sakai-QA to period.org. In fact there's some really great advantages to asking questions on the list because then everyone sees the question and sees the answer and if you have a question, odds are someone else does. But we've also found over time that having some, you know, uh, allocated particular period of time uh, gets people a little bit more motivated and makes it a little easier for uh, some spontaneity. And so to that end, I guess two things is uh, if you can mark your calendars or get people in your institution involved, um, on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Is, is our regular time slot, 10, to 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, which currently is minus five GMT, so that would be uh, 1,700 um, um, GMT and 1,800 uh, Central European time, and it's 7 a.m. Pacific. Uh, so I think it covers a lot of time zones people can, can meet. Um, so please consider doing that for our testing schedules, having that time allocated. And I guess that would be a good segue to talk about where starting to use a tool called Slack. And Matthew, um, could you bring up Slack and show that on your screen? And we can talk a little bit about how Slack works. Thank you. <coughs> so while Matthew's bringing that up, um, Slack is a tool for uh, allowing us to do chat, much like we can do in, um, much like we can do on, on Big Blue Button, but instead of having to log into, uh, you know, uh, Big Blue Button with all the overhead it has, it's great for being able to do screen sharing and and uh, voice and all these other things. A tool like Slack is much more lightweight and it allows you to easily create rooms. So we have a Sakai QA room there and we'll be doing a lot of discussion on there. The developers have set up a couple of rooms for their own discussions and it's easy to move back and forth between rooms. And as you can see, there's the Sakai QA room, and there's some people on it uh, right now, actually. And, uh, and so that's what we're going to be using for doing the chat. One of the cool things uh, somebody pointed out was that there's this tool called Luid. So one of the other cool things about Slack, it has plugins. I really haven't explored the plugins yet, but the plugins extend capabilities to, uh, uh, to Sakai, I mean, to, uh, Lu to um, Slack, and one of them is Luid. Let me see if I can show you on the screen here. Let's say room name. So I just created Luid, and you probably see that come up. And there's a room created by me, and you can join the room. And there's some link I'm supposed to click. Is it that one? Let me see. Yeah, so I'm clicking a link, which uh, or maybe that's the one we used to join. I'm still a little confused about that, but we can figure it out. Does anyone know which link I'm supposed to click? 
And then like the person who sets up the room clicks one link and then somebody else clicks the other link and you can do kind of spontaneous screen sharing with it. Um, as the owner, you can, oh, here we go, I see mine. Cool, so yeah, so, I, so the owner has one link and then everybody else have another link and then you can start doing screen sharing. So uh, to join, uh, I don't know if anyone asked that, but to join Slack, a lot of places um, are already joining by, uh, I'm adding domains in, and what that means is that once your domain for your institution is added in, uh, you can simply self-add. Uh, let's see, I believe it's, put this in the chat. I believe this is how you get in. If your institution is not yet added as a domain, um, then send me an email and I'll get you added. And then from that point on, I believe you can just click that link, the imperio.slack.com slash login, and then if anyone in your institution can kind of self self add themselves. Um, let's see where are we on the agenda thing here. Um, so that's that. Uh, in terms of what we're testing, let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, cool. Thanks, Louisa. Um, as far as what we're testing, um, I'm just going to show you, we're, do, we're breaking up the test into two. One of the things that's different about this testing than things we've done in the past is we're breaking it up into two different types of testing. And um, we're doing a little orientation. That's the advantage of being on Slack, is that we'll, we can do a little orientation, um, people joining, or figure out if people need extra help right while you're on to get you started. Um, but the, the difference, um, the other difference is, let me find that link to uh, the Morpheus issues log. I'll show that first. We're doing Morpheus issues log as one type of testing, and then the other type of testing we're doing is um, is going to be standard sort of Sakai testing like we've done in the past. Here, let me paste this in, Matt, so you can maybe share this uh, spreadsheet. I think it's public. Um, and we'll be clear. We'll, we'll do the best to be, to be clear on, on it. And just because also we've allocated this chunk of time to doing um, testing on Thursdays, that's, to, that's sort of like the engine, to prime the engine to get people testing. We're certainly hoping people will find, you know, allocate some time during their week to continue the testing effort. Um, so one of the big things we're doing here, um, so Matt's bringing up the spreadsheet. Thank you, Matt. You can see, well, first of all, we've prioritized the, the team. There's a planning team. We're doing one more dry run tomorrow. You're, you're welcome to join us for the dry run. What a dry run means is we're trying to, we're trying to iron out some of the kinks in the testing process so it'll be easier for the broader community. And, um, you know, I'm kind of anticipating we're going to evolve some of how we do our testing and make it more efficient over time, but at least get it to a point where we feel comfortable inviting you all to, to participate. Um, so we're doing our, our, our dry run tomorrow, and then I think we're going to be opening it up more broadly to the community after that. And as you can see on the sheet, the first thing we've done is prioritized uh, which things we want to make sure that get tested first, with so high, medium, and low. And then we have um, a bug count at the different priority level that happens automatically. Um, we have institutions which are signing up to um, work on a tool. And for some tools, it would be totally appropriate and helpful to have multiple um, institutions sign up to work on that tool and maybe collaborate a little bit together. Uh, for example, Samago test and quizzes, as we all know, is a very complex tool, so that would be excellent to have multiple institutions. Um, and then uh, that's kind of the, the high-level tool list page. Um, and let's see. Uh, if you go to the overview page tab, which is one over, Matt, uh, to the left, that gives you an overview of how to use the log. So if you want to take some time and, and read that, that might help you get prepared and understanding kind of where we are. And then if you notice the other tabs are the uh, the actual tools. So if you click, for example, on one that's, let's see, what's one, it's a good example of one that's already taken. Let's say assignments. And if you click on assignments, then you can see uh, that there's an arbitrary code, it's just sequential, assignments one and, and keep adding in. So as you're working in the assignments area, for example, and you find a new issue, you just put it next to the, la the current open issue is the bottom, assignments 19, and you'd put it in there and you'd explain the tool tab. So if there's like a button or an area you're in, that'll help people find it quicker, what the issue is. 
uh, is the next one, steps to reproduce it. Um, we're encouraging everyone to use uh, screenshots. There's a ton of really great uh, screenshot tools, including free ones like Skitch. There's um, a lot of people in the community, I think, I don't know that it's free, but use the TechSmith one Snagit, I think it is. Um, there's uh, one built into Jira called uh, Jira Capture. So whatever whatever format you want to use, but and you know there's ways of doing it through Evernote. So use whatever tool works well for you to get a screenshot and uh, indicate what browser you're in and, and uh, which uh, server you're using. And so what we're hoping to do with this, instead of opening up Jira's, is to get um, you know developers looking at the Morpheus developers looking at this, and they would hopefully kick out a lot of these kind of small issues. Um, kind of easily and, and then update them on the spreadsheet. So that's the rough thing. And then if we hit issues that require more work, probably we will need to open JIRAs for them. So that's that's a very different kind of a, a process than we've done in the past. Uh, Louisa asked a question, I wonder what the owner of a tool does, coordination of QA work efforts or do all the QA or both? That's a good question and I do have an answer, but I'm wondering if one of the other uh, I wonder if, like, Didi, if you want to jump in with that, if you're on. Sure, I am. I'm on. Hello, all. Um, the owner kind of takes responsibility for the tool to the best of their ability. Um, for example, we've taken on uh, Samigo testing quizzes, and we're doing our best to go through as much possible testing as we can. Now, again, um, with a test fest like this that we're going to have on Thursday, um, we would then be in Slack to say, hey, I'm seeing this. Does anybody else see the same thing? Or are we running into the same issue? And this way, the, the group consensus can also work at the same time. And the responsibility is saying, hey, you know, I know a lot about this tool, and I think I can bring the most to bear on that testing. Does that answer your question? Louisa, did that, did that help? OK, good. Great. Any others, questions? Okay. Okay, cool. So um, the other, uh, I'm going to paste in another link. Oh, uh, let's see, Wilma commented, others can still do QA on the tool, though, even if not the owner. Yes, that's that's an excellent point, Wilma. Just because somebody is, an, is not, if you're not an owner, you can still help out. Uh, or one of the owners is doing testing. And we need as much of the community as possible. And the, the objective of QA testing is really to find problems. Like, that's what we want. We want people to break things. So if you're really good at breaking things, this is your time where maybe in normal life, um, you know, that's not a very uh, desirable attribute to break things. And people, you know, cringe when they notice that you're about to break something. In QA, it's actually a really good thing. So it's an opportunity to make that, that the weakness into a, into a strength. I'm actually really good at breaking things. So for me, I, I do a good job finding things in QA. <laughs> but, um, you so are remember, very good at it. Yeah. So remember that when you're, when you're doing QA, it's not to make sure that the tool works. I mean, that's certainly important, but it's actually to find out how you can get it to break. And the more of these we can identify and the earlier we can identify them, then the quicker we can kind of triage them and decide the priority and, um, and then get them addressed. And that's really going to help us as folks, you know, put these, uh, put Sakai 11 into production. Of course, the more bugs we find in advance and have an opportunity to then make conscious decisions about uh, getting them fixed, then that's, that's what we need to do. So Diego wrote, maybe the link to the QA server and info about the users can be put in the overview page in the spreadsheet. Yeah, Diego, excellent point. I actually think that was a suggestion from yesterday's meeting. I'm not sure if um, we had a chance to do that, but that's exactly right. So we're gonna put um, we're gonna put the information in two different places. Uh, so let me let me mention that too. Um, and if it turns out that that it's too hard to maintain two places for information on testing, probably what we'll do is just go for the spreadsheet view. That seems to be the consensus. Because the other place um, in the past, and I'm still planning on maintaining this, may need a little help and guidance from the Sakai QA planning team, is um, in Confluence. Um, so we have two places. And that's that's how we've been running these. It seems like it generally has worked pretty well. Um, paste in this map. We're just here. So, uh, so I am planning on doing this, which is, um, if you notice, we have, uh, I'll wait for Matt to bring that up, and I'll explain kind of what that is. OK. 
comes. So there's a Sakai 11 QA hub, and this is how we've uh, run, um, you know, Sakai 2.9 and Sakai 10, where we have a hub so you can see what is the current active testing issue. So if you notice, there's one of these under Sakai testing that says active. Um, that's the one that we're currently on, the Sakai 11 driver, and I actually need to update it before tomorrow for tomorrow's uh, test. Um, and if you click on that link, Matt, the Sakai 11 dry run, um, what that then has on it is, you know, when we're testing, um, gives you a little bit more specifics. It puts on the test server, which we're also going to put on the spreadsheet so it will be convenient for people. Uh, we'll mention names of sites that may already be set up and users you can use, um, properties that have been uh, a link to the properties file. We might want to, over time, do a little bit better with that. Um, that's just a raw list of all the properties. So um, in the future, it would be nice to just kind of narrow it down to, to maybe certain properties to highlight. Uh, but that's a list of all the properties so you wanna, if you want to figure out if something's turned on or not on that Sakai instance. That's what that is. So this is like an overview and you know, how to get started testing and it has a link to the Google Docs. So you don't have to necessarily bookmark those new Google Docs yourself, um, those spreadsheets, you can get to them from here. And if you, Matt, if you wouldn't mind going back, if you see the breadcrumbs there where it has Sakai QA homepage up at the breadcrumbs, if you click on that, this is, uh, that's an overview, which again, probably needs a little bit of updating. In fact, I, I'm confident it does, but uh, has a lot of good information there to, to give you a general overview of what QA um, typically has been. And so a lot of that information is still relevant. Um, we're tweaking things um, specifically for Sakai 11 as we go along. So it may not be 100%, and that's where ultimately the reference that you want to use is Confluence, which points to those Google spreadsheets that have all the current information. And then using Slack and the Sakai QA um, listserv to get your questions answered. I'm going to take a breath and see if there's any questions about that or any comments from the other members of the team because in case anyone has a different perception or angle on that. I think we're still sort of discussing some of these things and, and whether, you know, how we're evolving them. Okay, super. I'll go on then. I'll assume no questions means everyone's absorbed all of that. Um, <laughs> so... Let's see. Oh, yeah, let me talk about the other type of testing. Um, get the link for that. So the other type of testing is, um, I'll paste that in the big blue button as well. This is a little bit more, and Matt will be bringing, if you don't mind bringing that spreadsheet up, this is a little bit more traditional um, Sakai QA, and this is, uh, um, you know, having a list of tools. So instead of with Morpheus, uh, this is this is really testing more of the functionality of the tool. And for those, we are still planning on on updating, doing um, doing um, Jira's, opening Jira's. And as you can see, we also went through and prioritized the tools here so we can focus on them. And we still have tool owners that I'm sure the tool owners can use help. And if you uh, you're welcome to reach out to those tool owners to ask what kind of help they can use. Um, and then there's uh, and then there's links to different kinds of scripts, and that's something where uh, some of those scripts are uh, updated, more current, and some of them are a little out of date. And we're just going to do the best we can to uh, maintain this list, update scripts where appropriate, use ones that look like they'll be helpful. Um, we're also may even experiment with a new type of script. Uh, we're talk, but we haven't gotten that far yet. And um, the new type of script would be, for example, setting up um, an existing site with an existing configuration in a test server, and then the test would be more like go to that site as this user role and test this specific thing. That way the user, the tester wouldn't have to um, necessarily go through all the setup. But we're a little ways off from, from doing that. That's just an idea we've had some discussion about. I think it's a great idea. And then when we would update, we'd update here in this spreadsheet to let you know, uh, we'll, we'll give it a name, what kind of test it is, and you can click the link and get to a particular test. And again, this is, uh, this is one for um, where you're going to open JIRA's, JIRA issues. And for another, uh, for another time and later in the process, I may give an overview or the QA team may want to give an overview 
because we haven't talked about what happens after computer specs. So the main part of the process that we're in here and we're talking about is finding bugs and getting them reported. Um, there's a little bit different of a process that kicks in once a developer fixes a bug, but we're not going to deal with that right now so we can keep, you know, keep things a little more focused. The other thing to keep in mind as we go through um, all this testing um, and uh, is that we are really focused on, oh, I see a question's come in. Let me see. Let's look direct. Are there any students involved? Oh, great question. So I got a direct email or direct chat uh, question here. Are there any students involved in QA? Um, let me finish up a couple thoughts and then I'm going to, I would have, if Didi, if you don't mind answering that, that's an excellent, excellent question. Student involvement in QA is definitely something we want to, um, you know, we want to encourage because uh, we think that could be a huge uh, resource for the community. Uh, let's see. So just to finish up my thought process uh, before getting that question answered, um, mentioned Jira. Uh, I think well, either I lost, either I completed my thought actually, or or I lost my train of thought. Either way, but um, that's kind of the overview. Again, we can get help you get into more detail, help you get oriented. Didi, um, if you could uh, go ahead, please, and talk a little bit about um, getting student involvement. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, here we have uh, graduate uh, students who are um, work about twenty hours a week. Uh, I have five that are currently um, dedicated to doing uh, testing. Uh, the group has been broken down into uh, uh, those who will be doing Morpheus testing and those who will be doing regression and functional testing, um, although they do overlap because uh, you can tell one from another. Um, each morning we have a, a quick little stand up on where they're at um, on testing and creating test scripts or updating the ones that you see here. Um, uh, we. Uh, then assign them to an area. We've uh, Maris has taken a couple of tools that we're trying to work on uh, deeply, and uh, so as we're going through the test cases, we're updating them, and then um, as we find a problem, depending on whether it's for Morpheus or whether it's for um, uh, regular old-fashioned functional testing, um, is where the students are appointed to um, update. So, for example, if they're doing the Morpheus testing, they will go to the um, spreadsheet that was first shown uh, and update that and say, hey, I did this test. This is the operating system I was on and this is what happened. And here's a quick picture of it using Sketch and da da. And then they go to the next one. Um, and we broke it down just in teams so that they can sit together. They're all in one big room and they chit chat about, oh, well, I found this, I found that, which is one of the reasons that we're doing the test fest or the dry run tomorrow is to get the same kind of community involvement that we're getting in a one big room uh, to be able to say, hey, you know, this doesn't look right. Does anybody else see the same thing? And to have that kind of uh, feedback on an instant loop is really, really helpful. Anybody have any questions on how they can put that in place in their institution? No, I'll, I'll put a I'll put a plug in here because people, you know, it's a lot to absorb. Um, mm -hmm. In my experience, uh, sometimes um, you know we set up separate. Uh, so one of the things we're going to try and do is sort of give orientations to get people up to speed in QA testing on the test fest. But it's also possible if that's not if that turns out that that's not practical or it's not going to work for you or we need some more in depth. I'm certainly happy to you know, schedule time to provide training. And I'm really confident that other members of the Sakai QA uh, uh, planning team and members of the community would be very, um, and their DD is saying same here. That's why I was feeling really confident that like if you would like like a training session, it's possible we can get a couple of institutions together and, you know, uh, and get on Big Blue Button and schedule some time to go in more depth uh, to help you get kind of jump started in, in any particular way that, that will work for you. So we're going to try and, and do kind of a lightweight training um, on the test fest itself. But again, that may not work for everybody. So uh, I just think it'll be really good for us to offer some alternatives for y'all. So if you want to get involved, we really uh, want to help get you started. Because we know it's a lot of information. And for those of us who have been doing it a long time, it's sort of second nature. But I certainly remember that it was not second nature getting started. And I've had a lot of experience, you know, working with different members of the community who needed a lot of time to get involved and feel comfortable uh, with the QA process. And 
with opening JIRAs and what happens if you don't want to want to open a JIRA because it just feels a little too, too intimidating or you're worried that you'll do it wrong, um, things like that. So, um, so I encourage you to consider getting involved and feel free to ask for um, for support either on list or you can send an email directly to any of the QA uh, team um, or you can you know send me an email directly and I'll I'll forward it on. Or, Hi, or yeah. Hi Neil, I was uh, going to give an example from Notre Dame here. Uh, we have never participated in the quality assurance testing either, um, but we're jumping in this year. And that means uh, me, Laura Geckler, and Laura Sira, we're full time. And we have a couple of students, a grad student and an undergrad student who are uh, helping us. They're giving us 10 hours a week of their time. So we're we're pretty much doing exactly what you're talking about. We're using these kinds of phone calls as training sessions and sitting in the same room together at, at least four hours a week. Um, the students are going to be working the rest of the time on their own, but we're using the community um, call-ins as sort of our touch points that we're on the same page and we figured out what we're doing and what kinds of feedback you need from us. I have written JIRAs before, not uh, necessarily as part of a QA effort, so that'll really help when we get to the regression part. But um, we'll, I, think you're, I think you're providing all the support and all the scaffolding that anybody needs to, uh, to jump in and um, participate in this huge effort. So thank you so much, planning committee and everybody who's working on all the resources to make this easy for the rest of us. Thanks, Laura. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, I, I definitely from experience, I'm aware that things like opening jurors can be intimidating and participating in other ways may be uncomfortable. And but we're here to, you know, kind of smooth that process, both in terms of, you know, providing some knowledge but also some reassurance that it is okay to participate and it's okay to make mistakes. Um, you know, the more people we have participating, the more eyes we have on 11, uh, the better it's going to be for the community and the better it's going to be for the Sakai product in the, in the end. So we're not so worried about people getting things perfectly. Um, it's just about, you know, getting participating uh, really, really helps. Um, and there's many, many different ways to participate. Which kind of is a, maybe a good segue, Matt, if you don't mind, I pasted another link into the uh, chat uh, just to cover the final topic I wanted to mention for right now anyway. And this is our badging effort coming up here. And um, I think uh, I haven't added really a lot of time to, we've had so many, so much to plan in this QA process. Uh, there's a few things we haven't had a lot of time to talk about. Um, we had a small uh, kind of badging group, uh, you know, small team that worked on this and I really, really appreciate the help. And I wanted to do two things, kind of introduce what this, what the concept of the badging is and also to get feedback on whether like the point levels make sense and I may, I could probably use a few people to test on it and bang around before I, you know, before we release it more publicly. Um, so what this is, is the idea of probably, how, how, I, mean, I don't know if we want to do a vote, but um, is anyone on the, on the, on this not familiar in any way with, with shape or form with badging? And just put something in chat real quick, if you don't know what badging is. So, a, so, it's a, so it looks like from that, at least most people, unless somebody's too shy to mention, they don't know what badging is. But uh, we thought it would be fun to sort of gamify the um, QA process by being able to award badges based on effort. And so we, uh, you might have seen a survey asking for some input on um, some cool, cool badge images uh, that highlighted the Sakaiga wearing, you know, white belt, black belt, and all that sort of thing. And so this is what we've got set up to date that we really haven't launched this yet, but we're very close, I think. <clears throat> the idea is that if you do, if you earn at least 20 points, you get a white belt. If you uh, earn at least 50 points, you'd get a yellow belt, 100 points, green belt, red belt 200, and black belt 500. And where do those points come from? If you scroll down, 
Um, there's different ways of uh, testing um, down there. There's different tasks you can do, like doing testing on JIRAs, which we're not really in that part right now, but like validating JIRAs, five points. Um, doing some ad hoc testing on your own, but putting in significant effort uh, to find issues. Uh, adopted tool testing is the name we've typically used for that, 10 points. Um, performing a test from a script. So if there's an existing script and you go through it, uh, like that was on that tool list, and you go through it step by step and do testing, you get awarded 15 points. Um, if you have performed a full regression, you've gone through a whole set of scripts to regression test a tool, uh, that would be worth 25 points. So it's not just doing some, you know, one little script, but doing a whole regression. Uh, if you update an existing test script to improve it, because that's an area we really need a lot of help, uh, it's 50 points. You could earn a lot of points by, you know, contributing new QA test scripts that the community can use. And then reporting a problem, typically in JIRA, but we want to make it easy, so um, we didn't want to make it JIRA specific. Um, so if you want to report a problem and maybe somebody else, one of the QA team puts in the JIRA for you, if that will be easier, um, that would be 15 points. So, uh, and then the idea is after that, there's, I uh, wish I could share my screen, Matt. Um, I probably could with Lewid, but uh, we have then those badges and they're in um, Credly. And so uh, when you earn the points, the points go into a spreadsheet, they accumulate, and periodically, me or maybe somebody else if I can find a, a nice helper uh, who's willing to do this with me. Uh, <clears throat> we can export the point totals that when you've earned your badges and import them into Credly and then it will send you a message and you'll have a badge. And there's pieces of that process that I'm not that familiar with in terms of how you can use your badge and um, other people like probably Wilma has experience with that and would know how to comment on those things. But so I'm curious about you know people's feedback on the badging idea and on the points and if folks would be willing to you know just need a couple of people you know two three people four people whatever to to go in and start you know and this is a self-service kind of thing right primarily it's self-service so you're the one who says um hey this is the thing so we're not we're not going to be you know monitoring if you you know how much testing you're doing that's the thing you need to report and say this is what i'm doing thanks linda i'm glad you like that idea and if you want to give it some thought um you know, whether that's point, I mean, we might just from experience see how those point totals work out for this uh, Sakai 11 QA testing, and maybe for a later version, we can change it based on what we learn. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so cool. And um, and again, also interested in if uh, two or three people want to contact me off list, uh, I notice it's about a quarter till, so I need to wrap up here, um, you know, to help, to help fill out the form so I could kind of test the back end and make sure that the spreadsheet's populating right and the calculations we have to do your accumulation of point totals is correct, that would be really, really awesome. And I think that covers most of the things I wanted to mention about Sakai QA. Um, uh, we're trying to work on that, like I said, kind of in the back and we're trying to work on other things that will make things easier for the community, including the um, QA testers and developers, but those are more kind of general discussions and some cool ideas and hopefully we'll be able to, to, to roll out some of those things at a later date. So I think that uh, I'll just wait and see if there's any questions. And again, if you want to volunteer, you can feel free to email me um, and, uh, and uh, be very happy to have you. If not, I may just reach out over email and ask for some volunteers. So, <clears throat> so I think that covers it. Um, thank you for, for listening and I hope, I hope it starts to getting you motivated. So Kai 11 is, as you know, oh, I wanted to mention, now I remember the thing I wanted to mention about testing. So for Morpheus specifically, I just wanted to let uh, kind of set community expectations that we're not, you know, while we're while Morpheus is, is tremendous and the work that's been done is amazing, the amount of work left is a lot. And we recognize there's several different major areas of it. Um, one is fixing basic inconsistencies, you know, stuff which just sort of has some glitches in it. That's the main thing we're trying to get fixed for the release of Sakai 11 is that phase one, and we really need to stay focused on the scope for what we're doing for 11. Um, uh, we may, you know, at a later date, we have this idea of having more consistent user interface and all the tool, the different tools. That's something, you know, right now, I don't, we don't think we have the, the person power to fix those issues, so we're not going to really be focusing on that. 
Uh, that's like buttons versus tabs in terms of picking, you know, you're in a tool and you have all these different buttons. Uh, it might be easier to make them into tabs. That's, that's for a later date. And making all the tools responsive is the ultimate goal, and that's a huge, huge job. So we're not expecting for this first release of Sakai 11 that all the tools will be fully responsive, but it just provides a great start. And, and so I think it's still really exciting. And um, so, yeah, so the more you can participate, and if we can get, you know, we need to get Sakai 11 out, we really need to in May, and it's a very exciting release. And I think a really good base for some future cool stuff. So that's all I got. Um, uh, so I think we should probably move on to discuss schedule and schedule future meetings because we have about 10 minutes left. Um, Neil, uh, Wilma has some stuff in the uh, chat. Oh, super, super. Ah, yeah, I, I just put a quick plug in for the next meeting for the documentation group because I noticed um, I think Fawe, Terry, and Linda were interested. Um, the next documentation meeting is March 4th at 10 a.m. That's a Friday, and we usually meet on the first Friday of the month. We had a, a date change. Um, we used to meet on Thursdays, but we've shifted to Fridays. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'm going to put a little plug in. I've created a um, calendar that I'm trying to capture all of the public Sakai meetings that happen, and um, I'm going to share that in the chat. And so if you subscribe to it, then you can see all those, those meetings. And um, you find calendar settings there. In addition, if you notice an event is missing, like somebody notified me this morning that we have a regular JIRA triage meeting on Mondays, and they noticed it was missing, so I just added it to the calendar. And if you're subscribed, you would automatically, you'd automatically see that. So let me put the link in here if you're interested in subscribing to that. There you go. Any other any other uh, final thoughts or announcements or questions? Thank you for the calendar, Neil. Welcome. It was actually Diego's idea, and I thought to myself, "Do, do." Especially with all the meetings that have emerged, like over the last year, it just feels like. So many new groups have popped up, just just incredible, uh, just unbelievable. So anyway, yeah. um, hi Neil, uh, about the calendar. So can anyone add the entry in there? I, I mean I the have, room schedule. I have control over adding the the entries. Um, so no, I don't think anyone has ability to add entries. But if you let me know, I don't think that things are you know that might be something to look at it later. Maybe we can. Have more people administer the calendar is probably not a bad idea, but for right now, I, I'm just administering it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any other questions or thoughts? Uh, let's see. So there's some questions about. Uh, let's see. From the last meeting, maybe how to make our meetings more interactive. There's going to be an Aperio teaching and learning, um, birds of a feather, and we really want to, um, you know, understand how we can do a better job of um, the facilitators in particular. We're interested in how we can do a better job of, you know, literally making it easier for people to feel empowered to, to bring topics forward and, and uh, you know, and just improve on what we've already got. Um, so that look for that at Aperio. Um, we are moving every other week. We've already started that, although we may, for example, schedule additional meetings. So that was another thing I almost forgot about. Um, if folks are interested in a more detailed training, one option would be next Wednesday. We could potentially use that as a off-week meeting um, to do more in-depth training on any particular aspect of QA that would help you. And that way, you've already got kind of the time blocked off. So I'm curious if anyone is interested in uh, in that and using that that the, kind of this time frame next week when we don't have anything scheduled. Does anyone uh, think they might want to use that time that way? Okay. Well, maybe not then. So. Bueller. Oh, let's see it again. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're now, now meeting every other week for 
uh, Perio Teaching and Learning, which means next week we would not be meeting normally. Um, but since we're involved in this uh, rather intensive QA effort for Sakai 11, I was curious if uh, folks would be interested in using that time and we could provide more specific training in any area that would be helpful um, to you to get started. I'm curious if that would be of, of use. We could go into a specific, uh, you know, more specific topic. Okay, well, Terry, if you would do it, then we can we can make it. And if you're the only one who shows up other than us, we can make it very tailored to your needs. <coughs> cool. So, so look for that on the announcement. We'll go ahead and do that. And any other, let's see, any other suggestions for upcoming topics? Um, what is the current schedule now? I kind of lost track. I think we, we, we rescheduled the Panopto one. I remember that. I forget what we rescheduled it for. Let's see. I'll go look at the confluence page here. Upcoming meetings. So uh, the next meeting, uh, we're going to make one for February 24th, an off week. Normally an off week, so we'll add that in, uh, just, and we'll go into a specific QA training. So we'll be looking for input from the community or from specific individuals or institutions, what they would like to, you know, cover, or we can go whatever. We'll figure that out. And March 2nd is Texas State Marketing Proposal Review. And March 16th is Panopto Electric Capture. So that's what we've got coming up. And I'm cur we're curious, uh, the facilitating team is always curious, like, what Oops. Uh, let me paste that in. Paste it pretty messy there. Uh, what folks are, are there any other issues or topics or things that people are interested in seeing? Um, either volunteering yourself to lead like a bird's, you know, like a little round robin discussion on something or present something your institution is doing, or you're curious about one of the groups, the working groups in the community, and you'd like to hear a little bit more from them. Any, just curious, any, any topics that you, uh, you're interested in? So I'm not seeing the chat here. I see some things coming in. Okay, cool. Demo of columns and lessons. Yeah, that's a really good one. I uh, wonder, do we have any volunteers who would do a demo of columns and lessons? Uh, I'm sorry, a demo of what in lessons? I'm using columns. A columns? Yes, I can do it. Cool. I'm signing you up. What's a good date for you? Do you have a good date for doing uh, it? If it's 10 o'clock on Wednesday, uh, right now, I'm open in the next couple of weeks. So if we schedule this, other meetings cannot interfere. Okay. So well, what, like, what days do you have here? Well, at the moment, I think, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Wash your <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I see this in everybody's ear. Um, please wash your hands. Um, let's see. <laughs> don't get us sick. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't get sick. Uh, don't spread the worms uh, online. No, I'm very sorry. I don't want to spread viruses online. Um, let me take a look at the calendar really quickly here and tell you what, what I think is available. Um, so really, um, the next the next available one is March 30th is the next, because we're meeting every other week uh -huh. uh, with some exceptions. But so March 30th will be the next available day for that. Wow. Okay, the end of March. Uh, March thirties. Let me let me check other calendar to make sure. Okay, you say ten to eleven, right? Okay, right. should be good. Okay, cool, awesome. We'll sign you up for that. Um, right. And that's new teachers or benefits list. Yes, actually. Oh, Didi, you started one. Cool. Uh, hi, bye, Wilma. Uh, catch you next time. Bye, anyone who has to drop off. Um, and that's cool, Didi. Can we share? Can we share off list because I'm also working on that for some presentations. I'm working on that, and I'm also thinking that should be 
our big thing for Sakai 11 marketing, that probably one of the first things we need to do. Absolutely. Is... Bye, Diego. Bye. Um, yeah. Awesome. So Thanks, Terry. And, uh, and share notes on what we've got so far and what we should be Absolutely. Maybe Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, cool. And we can certainly bring that back to the group. And um, right now, that would not be until, uh, let's see, April 13th. So unless we decide we want more frequent meetings, <laughs> you know, again, um, that would be 13th uh, benefits of Sakai 11, benefits highlights of Sakai 11. Uh, we could certainly potentially do something before then uh, if there's demand. Cool. All right. Well, I see we've reached, uh, well, we still have a, let's see, added a Sakaiger icon in Slack. Okay, thanks, Diego. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think that covers it. Any final questions, announcements, and thoughts? Blessings, appreciations, uh, good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're awesome, Neil. Thank you for taking this on. March 30th would be the fifth Wednesday. Well, we're doing every other week, Terry, so I think that works out okay. We decided not to do the first and third. Uh, Jolie wants to be in the group that collects new features benefits. Awesome. Uh, okay, cool. Um, and Mark Reschick has a question for Diego. Is that exportable in some way? Uh, yeah, you, I'm sure you, you, you could uh, probably take that offline with Diego. So thanks, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording now and then publish to a YouTube uh, probably by the end of this week. And if I don't, please nag me.